They know that uh, Mamadjorov has stormed ahead into the lead and they'll be wanting to catch up. Meanwhile, wow, Magnus isn't at the board and the clocks have started. Hikaru playing his first move. Magnus, uh, a bit of a gambit already and it's not even move one. You can see that Nakamura is kind of shocked that uh, he did not show up in time. And so is Magnus. You know, he seems to indicate. But he's not he... in a rush. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> but this, this is this is Magnus's power move, right? <laughs> We've seen him do that before. You know, he, he, when he arrived two and a half minutes late for that game in the Blitz, you know, he literally adjusted all his pieces before he made his move. I mean, what kind of power move is that? Wow, and uh, the game has started after Magnus kind of gives Hikaru 30 seconds lead on the clock. And it's the exact same opening to it that we've seen from Hikaru I'm several times. I'm not surprised. Times. Not surprised. He decided this way. He's not losing and wasting energy, rethink what to do. Yeah. Let's go for it. This is what I decided. I want to put my energy and invest it in other things. In the middle game, end game, when you have to shuffle things the way to, to turn things around. Wow, and Magnus taking a long think. It's only move six. This is really surprising, kind of forfeiting uh, a few minutes on the clock here, pretty much. And OK, he plays bishop to f5, very logical move, developing pieces. And what does Hikaru have in store? Just rock solid, almost a London system set up here for white. And the players will now just slowly develop the pieces. The action will be much later in the game. Magnus will hope that the clock times balance out before that. Yeah, and uh, Hikaru actually asking Magnus a question now with this last queen move. He's just saying, how are you going to defend the pawn on b7? And still, there are some questions there because if the queen does step forward, I mean, first of all, if I were playing with the white pieces, I would come in with my bishop to the b5 square and get ready to jump in with the knight on e5. Yeah, looks very tempting. Now the question is whether bishop b5 can be played with an idea of knight e5 and what Magnus has in mind, whether is he really going to play f6 to stop that? Wow, just to cover the e5 square, it's possible. Magnus has done crazier stuff. But maybe he just wants to go bishop uh, d6 after bishop b5. Yeah, well, let's see. <laughs> yeah, we'll find out the answer to the question. Okay, he trades knight. Now, is it too crazy to actually take that knight with the king. <laughs> <laughs> the king will be stranded in the center of the board for the rest of the game. That's true. Wow, he plays it, Hikaru, <laughs> really desperate to win here, and Magnus reacts lightning fast with f6. No knight jumps for you. And but wow, king this D2, king. I'm not sure it was a good sign that he went for this direction. No, it was a bit um, one track mind. I think he needed to. Because where are you with going with your king? Usually you're not castling alongside in these systems, right? Right, and and you, and the, one other thing that is quite concerning for White is actually this light square bishop that Black has on the f5 square, because the king is never going to find any safety on the queen side with that piece looming on the board. I mean, Black can even go very aggressive g5, g4 kind of stuff. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, <gasps> oh, wow. well, maybe not anymore. Knight d4. Mag Alarm bells ringing though. Ooh, e5. Look Step at forward. That. Ooh. Ooh. But Hikaru really breaking all the rules. Because, you know, we're taught, first of all, don't move your king into <laughs> the opening, <laughs> into the center, and then certainly don't open any lines. He is Fisher Random World Champion, though, <laughs> and this does look like a Fisher Random game with the king out on d2. So will he get time after the queen trade that's about to happen to run back with his king to safety? I'm really surprised, I must admit, by Magnus's last move. Very strange. Yeah. But Go for checkmate when your opponent's king is in the center. Right. That's what we're taught. But I, I think he's just saying, simply saying, look, the bishop on g3 locked out of the game. That's true. And uh, let's uh, continue the dancing on the queen side. Okay, so go g5. h5. Yeah. Stepping forward with all the pawns. He's going to gain, si uh, gain space on both sides, on both flanks here as black. It's still a beautiful position here for Magnus, but I'm really shocked he didn't go for checkmate to try and punish Well, Hikaru. maybe he just wants to play for one result. Two results, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we could all play for one result, Chief. <laughs> and he thinks that, okay, probably Nakamura also will not feel too comfortable with this with White because he just sits and waits uh, what kind of plans uh, Magnus will work out. H4, G5, King G6, Rook D8. Oops. Yeah, already. What's this? What's this? D5 is hanging. Yeah, What's Magnus. Going on? Maybe just playing too slow. It feels like he's not quite in the zone in this game. Instead of going for checkmate, he's been forced to allow a bunch of trades. But don't forget that Bishop on H2. 
Yeah, one bad piece. <laughs> That's White's problem long term. White has nine pawns, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> nine pawns and uh, not enough pieces. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, but at least some pressure has been relieved with this uh, last exchange. Magnus wants to be very instructive. C5, C4, sorry. In every game. In every uh, game. Nakamura plays. It this. seems to be like the formula, right? Get C develop pieces, get C4 in. Ta da! Yeah, and some tactics, some tricks here. You have to be really careful as black, actually. This yeah. pawn's being undermined, and your knight is really loose in the center of the board. Yeah, now it's. It's anyone's game. Uh, I mean, it is White's idea, so if Black were to double rooks on the C-line, it's just simply to go B4 the pro or... The problem for White, uh, for Black, that rook C8 does not work, because C takes D5, rook C1 oh, yes. takes on E6 and captures the knight on, on E4. And, okay, the H2 bishop is bad, but two bishop versus the rook is plus. Yeah. Yeah, huge threats. How does Magnus deal with this? Pawn takes pawn is a winning idea if he gets time. Hikaru Nakamura suddenly the clocks as well. Magnus down to 30 seconds. He's going to regret kind of forfeiting that 30 fast. seconds. He played earlier. too fast, made decisions. Oh, wow. Well, Action. It is all happening. Fire on the board, lots of calculation to be done. And right now, white can go a pawn up in the endgame if they just, uh, if Hikaru here just takes this black bishop with a check and then recaptures on f3, but he's thinking of something else. But does, if he were to grab that pawn, his bishop on h2 would be saddled there until the end of times. And that's something that is strategically rarely, really concerning. Very interesting, uh, this move with Magnus played g4. He's not scared of getting his knight trapped on the edge of the board. I would be slightly uh, kind of worried here if I were Magnus Carlsen. This black knight has no escape squares. That's why Hikaru has stepped forward. F4, taking away the g5 square from black's knight. Now all Hikaru needs is to tr teleport his king over oh. to g2. Wow, no way back now for that piece. Magnus F1. playing with fire. Just king f1, retreat. Rook g8, rook c7. And white's playing with an extra piece, essentially. The white king, the white bishop, they are kind of cancelling out the black rook and knight right now. Magnus is totally stuck, totally immobilized. I hate what Magnus has been doing. And there we go, Judith. White's rook is activating. Could we see white just be winning in the next few moves? It's quite a funny setup, having the bishop on h2 and knight on h3. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try it at home. That's uh, the problem. <laughs> Actually, the bishop is coming into the game. But uh, Magnus is wriggling hard, you know. Now the rook has c come to g4, h4 is threatened yeah, on the board. because king g2, knight f4 takes h4. Yes. Mm -hmm. Takes, and then you go h4, you win back the piece, you win back the white bishop at the end. But I don't understand why Hikaru is, there we go, not just activating okay. his rook. You can hit my bishop, but I'll just happily retreat, and the black knight's still trapped for the rest of the game. And Magnus under 20 seconds, and his position is concerning. Yes, position's more than concerning. It might just be lost here. And under 10 seconds, as you say, Yvanka. What next? Where's he going with that black king? Really mysterious stuff. He can barely move. And now Nakamura's just going pawn hunting, going for black's pawns on the queen side. Grab them. Why not? Well, how many seconds? 15 seconds for Hikaru. And he's taking some time out just to see whether he can grab the pawn. And he wants to go king g4. But now what? Knight f2, king wow. h3. He has his magic ideas. <laughs> this is the definition of magic, Judith. Look at what he's done. The black king has crept into the position. <gasps> he's going for the win, Magnus, if he can get his king into the f3 square. Hikaru has to pull the brakes, and he has to do it now. He's a piece up, Hikaru, but uh, White's bishop is so trapped. And, it, and the clock is ticking down, and the king has come to f3. Wow. What a resource by Magnus. Oh, the pawns are disappearing. Still some checkmate threats. Black's e-pawn threatening to come forward. And look at the clock. Both players. Seconds left. Indecision there from Why Magnus. Why f4? He's just not taking a free pawn there, it feels like. Okay, but he can go back in. <laughs> Magnus has uh, got to draw up his sleeve if he wants it, it feels like. He can bring his king across. Hikaru's just repeating now. Bringing his rook, trying to give a check. Hey, Magnus takes the pawn. Black has to be the favorite here, Judith. Well, the, those two extra pawns, f4, f3, and nothing will stop him. f3. Keep pushing. No, go three, three times around still. He's just repeating <laughs> moves here. 
gaining time on the clock. The players do have a two-second increment, but he's stuck. How can he break through here, Magnus Carlsen? King f3 and it's gone. Ooh, he's e2, curled up e2, into a ball. E2 and rook b1. Judah, I think you spotted a direct win there. He's still going to find it, though, Magnus Carlsen. He's got three pawns now, the b-pawn running. Hikaru is about to resign. Three pawns is Very too much. Very relaxed, Magnus. Just sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of h3 knight he had? <laughs> and, I mean, oh my god. What a game. What a turnaround. I mean, this just goes to show it's all about <laughs> holding the nerves when the clock is ticking down on its final seconds. And here comes f3. Oof. What's that? Isn't f? What's that? F2. F2. Do anything at this point. Uh, Pawns are rolling. Me. Black is about to win. And Hikaru Ooh, offers his hand. What a painful loss for Nakamura. This is not the way Magnus wanted to win. No. But there's such a genius plan, giving up his knight and just entering with the Black King. Just so resourceful to see that idea, that plan from moves ahead with no time on his clock. Magnus deserving it in the end. But yeah, earlier play, questionable <laughs> to say the least. Well, it was basically after the opening, it was like full, huge advantage, right? And there you can see the big smile on Magnus's face because he knows he got away with it.